Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I would like to make a Valentine's Day card with you. And I will do it in real time, but if there is anything I can fast forward through, I will do so just for time's sake. Today I'm using the Just Right Cling Stamp, and here's two of them. These are really great stamps. I'll put all the product codes in the description box below. So this one is the Reverse Crackle. And again, it's a background stamp, and as you can see, it's four and a half by five and three quarters, which gives you a chance to trim it out and get a perfect mat or a perfect A2 size um, card front. And I like that they come on these hard plastic sheets with binder ring holes. This this is the one we'll be using today, and it's deeply etched. These are re these give really great impressions. This one here is an upcycled wood grain. And look how pretty that is. That would look so pretty to stamp it out like in chestnut roan or any type of brown and then go through with your blending tool and add some shading to it. So I'll be using this in a future project. I'd like to show you though how they sit inside of a binder. So here I just have a regular binder. This is a uh, basic gray capture binder. And obviously I won't be keeping my stamps in this. I plan on making a binder to hold all of these stamps. This is a great way to store them. And there you can see they fit perfectly in here. So you could flip through them and grab what you need and they just pull right off of this backing sheet. So let me just set this aside for now. I will be using my Fiskars stamp press, and this is a uh, stamp clean, so it just holds on there perfectly. I'm just going to stamp it on a plain piece of white cardstock, and I'm using the Distress Ink in Festive Berries. And when it's large like this, you want to take your stamp pad to your stamp. So I like to just kind of go around, make sure I got the full stamp, and then go back and pounce on it. Make sure I'm getting a good coverage. Just going to press this down and make sure I have good firm pressure on the entire stamp. Isn't that pretty? So now I will just take a alcohol-free baby wipe. These are just the cheap baby wipes. I think I got it either probably from the dollar store or Walmart and just clean that off here real quick. Okay, and I'll set that aside. I'm going to be in that distressing takes a minute to dry. I'm going to set this aside. Using another piece of white cardstock, I will cut my card base. So this will be a standard size card and I want it to be a top folding card. So I will leave the 11 inches alone and I will cut this at four and a quarter. On the 11 inch side, and I'm using my score tool from the Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit. I like using this in my scoreboard. It gives me a great um, line here, a great score. So on the 11 inch side, I want to score it at five and a half, which is in half. Now I will fold it in half and give it a good crease with my bone folder. So now I want a mat that is not a perfect fit for this. I want to leave a little bit of a border. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I need to cut this down to four by five and a quarter. And that's a perfect mat for the front of my card. So let me um, set this aside. I do want to go over the edges with the festive berries just to give it a little bit darker edge. 
and I'm using the Tim Holtz mini blending tools so next I'm using the Sizzix card front hearts with layering shapes I've used this in a previous project this is a really fun die to work with I am not using the card front part. I'm going to use the layered hearts that come with it. And actually I'm going to use two of them out of this set. It comes with six. What I want to do is use some of the same scrap piece of white paper and I want the same color that I'm using. So I'm just going to ink up my paper And I'll take my heat tool to this to make sure it's dry before I add my dies to it. I'm using a little bit of scotch tape just to hold them in place and use my Sizzix Big Shot. Also I'm using some new plates from Sizzix. These will be out in March. I will have the product code because you can pre-order these. These are the ones in mint. They also come in watermelon and grape. These are great. Plenty of these out. I don't think I'll need this many, but it's such a pretty color. I figured I'd, I'd cut them out anyways and use them in the future. And also I want to share with you a sweet lady on Facebook gave me the idea to label this because as you can see, I accidentally always cut on both of them. And this reminds me just to keep the cut side up of my blade on this side. Not that it matters, you can cut on either one of these, but it just helps to keep one of them nice and then you only have to replace this in, you know, when it gets really bad or really bothers you. So let me set this aside. Okay, so it, here I have a cut that I cut out from the Silhouette online store and I will have the design number on Cut at Home's blog, so check the blog for all the information. And now I want to put some balloon, heart balloons. As you can see that was a super simple card to make and I went ahead and popped up this layer onto my card base and now I'm going to make a mat for the inside of my card and what I want to use is I will be doing that in the silhouette cameo and I want to use these sketch pens from silhouette these are the metallic sketch pens and these are really pretty so let me just show you quickly on the designers um, silhouette studio how I do this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm making a mat for the inside of my card. So I'm going to draw out a rectangle here and I will select it and go up here to my scale window. I am going to uncheck the lock aspect box and change my mat to four by five and a quarter. 
which should give me a nice size mat inside of my card. So the next thing I want to do is go up to my fill pattern window, choose a pattern, and I already have one in mind. I'm going to use this one, but I want to change the scale of it. So I'm going over down here to advanced options. And I'm going to scale the pattern up a little bit to probably about one, 150%. Then I also don't want it as pink as it shows here. So I'm going to go under transparency and change that to probably about a 40, somewhere right there, like about a 40 um, transparency. That way it lightens the tone a little. So now the next thing I want to do is go to my library, choose a saying, and I'm going to use this Happy Valentine's Day. And I'm going to use this one right here. So I will select this design and go down here to ungroup and I'm going to get rid of this one so I'll just hit the delete button and get that out of my way and now this is the one I'll be using so I'm going to just size that down a little by dragging it and I just kind of want to center that in the middle and let me zoom in I'll use my um, where you drag over the shape to zoom Okay, now once I'm happy with that, what I'm going to do, because I need to print this out first, so I'm going to, now that it's exactly where I want it, I'm going to drag it over to the side. And actually, I don't want to drag that, so I'm going to move that back. I want to make sure I'm grabbing my sentiment. Drag that over to the side. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to move it up here, actually and I'm going to get it exactly where I want again. Okay, now that it's where I want, I'm going to, again, drag my sentiment over to the side, and I'm going to print this out first. So I will go up here to my Send to Printer. I will select that and select Print. Okay, now that that has printed out, I'm going to hit the back button because the last thing I did was move my sentiment out of the way. So I'm going up here to hit undo and it'll put my sentiment back exactly where I had it. And I will be placing my paper on the mat exactly where it shows here. Then the next thing I want to do is select this box, go over here to the cut settings, and I want to select no cut because I don't want to draw around this box. Now I want to select my sentiment and over here where I'm choosing material type, I want to scroll down and select the silhouette sketch pen. And by selecting that, it will automatically change my speed and thickness to where I want. Now you can select double, you can select double cut or unselect it. I always do double cut and it gives me a perfect um, image every time. So now I will simply send this to the silhouette and I'll show you how that turns out.
So here is how it turned out. Let me give you a close-up view. I don't believe that the camera will pick up the metallic shine that it has, but it's really pretty. So I'm just going to cut this mat out. And I will use the Angel Craft Tape to adhere it. This is a really great sticky tape, and this is the quarter inch. Being that this has a gold metallic finish, I think I want to add a little gold to the sides here as well. So I'm going to use a scratch piece of paper. I will also use a scratch piece of cardstock. My Versamark and my ultra thick embossing enamel. This is in gold. I'm just going to use this as a guide and this does not have to be perfect. If you want it perfect, you can really um, work at it and measure it out, but I'm just simply going to get the edges of my paper. And I'm going to do one side at a time. As you can see that gives it such a pretty look to it and if I wanted to this tape is heat resistant so if I wanted a thicker border if I was using a thicker border I can use this quarter inch tape and do the exact same thing minus the Versamark so I'm pressing it down I'm taking the release backing off of it and now I can add my embossing powder to it and with the tape, what I like to do is just kind of rub it in there, make sure it's really adhered down to the tape. So I'm just lightly rubbing on the tape itself. Now I'll put the excess embossing powder back. And now I will heat it up just like I was going to do with my Versamark. So let me show you here. And look at that, that's on copy weight paper. So as you can see, isn't that neat that you can do that with that tape? So I could have done that if I wanted a quarter inch border. I wanted a little bit less than that, but it really saves you a lot of time if you do it that way. So now being that um, I decided to emboss, I'm going to add a little bit more of this strong adhesive on the back just to make sure that my paper is not um, as warped because it is a little bit warped right now from the heat of the heat tool. And I love when doing Valentine's cards to use both pink and a red. So that's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed the process of this card and I hope you like it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and please check out Cut at Home's blog for all the products that I use today and lots of inspiration. Thanks for watching.